Hi, everybody. I'm Pastor Greg Brown, and this is Skyway Church out in Goodyear, Arizona. And we're here tonight with Destiny Groups. Let's give Jesus a hand as we celebrate our destiny in Christ. Amen. In our chapter tonight in our book, it's called Destined for Ministry. And did you know that God has a call for ministry in each and every one of our lives? And in, in the practical realm, about 3% of those that are born again actually serve in a local church or a missionary organization. So we could say 3% of the body of Christ are vocational. They receive their employment by, by working for the kingdom of God. But the great commission is that there's 100% of us called to do the work of Christ for the great commission. So that means 97% of us may be employed outside of the local church, but all 97% are also equally called to do the work of ministry, just like we are called as pastors of the church and things like that. How many of you believe that? You have a calling from God to be able to serve. Well, this chapter goes into this. And so sometimes people ask me the question, say, but Pastor Greg, how can I find my ministry? How can I know what my ministry, how do I get involved in ministry and these types of things? Well, the exciting thing is, is that the first step towards being involved in ministry is say yes to opportunity. I mean, you know, if you say yes, something good will happen. And, and so, you know, when people say, how do I, how do I get involved in ministry? Just learn to say yes. And here's another principle that's in, the, in our chapter that I really want to pull it out right now in our teaching time is that learn to tithe your time. You know, lots of times you come to church, you hear about tithing your money, and, and we, we, are, you know, we want everybody to tithe from their finances, but how many of you ever thought about tithing your time? You know, if you're awake 16 hours a day, you have 1.6 hours a day that you should be giving yourself to the Lord and say, Lord, what do you want to do with me? And you know what could happen in the body of Christ if we mobilize the body of Christ and train the body of Christ to be able to say, I will give at least one hour a week of my time at my local church. I'm telling you, friends, we would have such a labor force for the kingdom of God. It would change Christendom if we had 100% of the people given at least one hour a week just to represent the kingdom of God in our churches. And so sometimes we have to think, how do I get involved? Say yes and be willing to tithe your time. Be willing to allow yourself to be stretched beyond your comfort zones. Sometimes we say, well, I'm comfortable doing this, but Jesus always wants you to walk on the other side of the boat. How many of you know what I'm talking about there, you know? And so these are some of the ways that you could begin seeing yourself getting trained, equipped for ministry. We'll talk about that tonight. But some of you want to go into full-time ministry. You have a call, you say, I want to, I want to really have my whole life, my vocation be in the church serving God. And if that's you, how do you get started? Volunteer. I, I really, if you, the, everybody I know that's in full-time ministry, they started by being a volunteer. And volunteer and be the best volunteer. And then as you are faithful in volunteering, become a leader. Become a leader in your church. Become a leader in a missions organization. Volunteer, be a leader, be committed in these ways, and suddenly doors will start to be opening. And then here's another thing for everybody, especially those who want to be in full-time vocational ministry, be accountable. So many times we want to be accountable to God, who's invisible, but God said, I want you to learn how to be accountable to people on earth. Does that make sense? Because if you're accountable, somebody can say, hey, you know, you, there's something going on here in your life that we can work on together. We can develop this area of your life. We can do this. We can grow this way. But if there's nobody that you're accountable to, then it makes it difficult for you to really become mature in the ways that God wants you to be mature in to be a full-time vocational ministry. So those are just a few points about how you can grow to be a minister if you're in the marketplace or in the church. But tonight, I want us to welcome, at our guest table, we have Jean and Michelle Schreiber. Let's give them a big hand. And I'm gonna come right here and, and join you. And Jean and Michelle, it is such an honor to, to have you at the table. We commissioned you a few years ago, and you you hit the trail. You've gone into, into God-opened doors of full-time ministry for you guys. You've been in the marketplace. You're in full-time ministry. That ministry includes deliverance, inner healing, just coaching, mentoring, so many things that people will say, man, I want to do that. 
Can you just tell us a little bit about what's happened in these last few years since you've hit the road? More than we have time for. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> the first uh, thing that comes to mind is that once we aligned with your ministry okay. and ascend after that, and we started hearing the principles of God that, and we've both been church goers and actually ordained ministers for a long, long time, but principles that we did not have, we had not apprehended, first fruits. Okay. That, see, that's awesome. Huge. Talk about how that impacted you being able to go into ministry. Well, we were encouraged by you through that teaching to give offering above and beyond the tithe. Yes. And God started re rewarding us okay. because of, as a result of that. Amen. So, but we had to do some things to see that reward really start coming in fullness. Yeah. But it was the start. Yes. You said, how did it start? That's how it started. Started with first fruits. First fruits. You know, Chuck Pierce gives that same testimony. You know, everybody thinks about, oh, Chuck Pierce. And, and when you listen to Chuck, he will always bring it back to first fruits. That's interesting, huh? That is interesting. Amen. That's amazing. So some of the first things we had to do, we had to get some finances right. We were just out of alignment here. Okay. You want to tell your little story? Yeah. Is it a little Michelle, too early? Do you want to... We were visiting. Let me let me tell you guys. We, they came into town and said, "Pastor, we just want to visit with you and tell you all the, all the things that God's doing." And you guys make such a difference in so many people's lives. It's huge. Thank you. And uh, Michelle, you were telling me about about some things. You guys had to get something fixed before the min doors of ministry really opened. That's correct. That's, yeah, that's right. So we had been through a, um, a long season of uh, financial deficit and it seemed like it was getting worse and not better and I didn't guard my heart and I became bitter um, but I went through the motion of look I'm happy you know and uh, not letting people know how I was feeling and not um, taking it before God and I I would um, part of what I did in the day was walk my dog and I'd go down the street and check the mailbox um, and then bring the mail back. And we were getting so many bills in the mail. Um, there was, it was like demonic how many bills were coming in. Because some of them I didn't even know the money and it was just um, uh, awful. Um, I felt like we were spiraling in a negative way um, financially. And I got to a point where I stopped taking the mail out of the mailbox and I, I was saying, really bad things uh, when I would go to the mailbox. Like, I hate coming here. All right, I hate this, I, uh, I hate the mailman, or just, just you know, really <laughs> Poor mailman. And I'd slam, the, slam it shut and open back up, and I'd slam it again and had this, like, fight with the, the box, which was really stupid, um, and I knew better, just not to speak things out of my mouth like that. I, I, I totally knew better, but I just did it. I, I was so angry at one point, I almost snapped the key off in the box so that we couldn't go to the mailbox anymore because I, I just couldn't <laughs> take it anymore. So I just, uh, I left the mail in the box and I started lying uh, to my husband when he asked if we, you know, where's the mail? Aren't we getting any mail? And I said, no, I don't, I don't know what's going on. You know. <laughs> no well, mail. didn't you check it? Yes. <clears throat> so during that, this was going on for a little while. And anyhow, during that season, I had went to a conference, a women's conference here in, in Arizona. And um, I realized I had lost my joy. And during that conference, and the Lord just restored it and th through hearing the word of God. And I re repented for my heart attitude. And I also caught a revelation at that conference about calling in debt free intentionally calling it in almost like like you would call in your dog and you whistle for it, you know just whatever you got to do call it in and i i had stopped praying and, and really warring because i had been weary for a long time with um a, a great financial loss and i know a lot of you have experienced that as well i really thought i was exempt from losing the money that i had and the income i had because of i believe that the Lord was going to bless me. And then I believe the lie of the enemy that the Lord wasn't blessing me anymore. Um, we just went through the fire, but I had to check my attitude and I repented 
and when I got home from the conference, I, um, I anointed, I told my husband what I was doing or not doing and that I had lied to him. And then I, we prayed and, um, I anointed the mailbox. I repented. I, and I, I said, the, you know, I started speaking blessings over the mailbox that, uh, you know, to reverse what I was saying and, uh, God bless the mailman and all that, you know. Mailman started then, about yeah. prospering. Don't forget the dog. dog yeah, and I also, I, I also um, laid hands on my dog and made a declaration over the dog that every time I called him, he would that I was calling in debt free, and I nicknamed him debt free. His middle name is debt free, so he carries that right. So I just got, you know, I was, I, I figured. I have nothing to lose because I've lost it all, almost. And I just got to get, you know, down and dirty with prayer, you know, and just everything I've ever learned, I'm going to do it. So I um, also, I had a dream during that time. Um, and in the dream, I saw a bandit coming up behind me. And the bandit was, it was wearing like jail clothes, black and white striped and a bandit mask. And like it was. Hamburglar. Or yeah. Exactly. Like yeah. Yeah. It was like, it was, <laughs> it was the hamburger. And, and it was pilfering things and stealing things from be, literally behind my back. And I was like, what? That's a thief. And I woke, I woke right up. And I remembered the scripture about if the thief is found, he must repay sevenfold. And I think we all know that scripture and I've prayed it and. I'm like, why you showed me that for a reason? And then I had um, got that book by Jeremiah, Jeremy. Um, Nelson? Yes, on um, the justices of God. Mm -hmm. So I, I prayed the justices of God over that thief. And he had a similar dream in that book, too. It was interesting. But um, besides that, what else? Like, you wrote, a, you wrote everything oh, out. Yeah. So I wrote. So, little coaching here. I wrote down um, everything that I thought w that was stolen that I could think of and it kept going on and on we had several pages like he he jumped in with me and I wrote a uh a, a, like a contract to God that as if I was going to court and represent myself and um I dec you know I want all this back this this uh, enemy's been found and uh, this isn't just I finances by the way yeah I was we called back in relationships and all kinds of other things not just yeah. finances because the enemy steals more than just your money. And he takes things that you don't even know are gone until five years later and you go, what happened to that in my life? Wow. So it's, it's joy, it's relationships, it's money, it's a lot of things. And so we put it all down. It was many pages and we were shocked at how much we had let the enemy rob yes. from us. We were shocked. Yeah, missed, uh, missed opportunities as well. You know, when you should have got a job or uh, somebody was, we had people telling us, you know, the Lord told us to give you money, you know, but I didn't. And then they never gave us any money. They, <laughs> they just said that, you know, and, you know, it was really, really, We're, I'm, I was supposed to support you. Um, anyhow. Um, so, so after you we, did that, we went into the courts of heaven and I brought that before the Lord and dealt with that, um, all those things. And I just let it go. And um, in about a week. Uh, went to the mailbox, and there were seven checks in the mail, nothing else, just checks. Wow. From, they were um, check, at, least, at least $700 each. They were reimbursement, I mean, not reimbursement, they were restitution for money that was owed me from the state of Oregon. I had been on unemployment when I moved here from Oregon, and um, they had shortchanged me by a great deal of money. That was a lot of money. Then the next day, there was two more checks. So we got a total of 10 checks suddenly. Like, that's fast, right? Yeah, it was within a week. We started getting checks in the mail. But we also, during this time, even though we both had really good jobs and we really had made really good money, everybody went through 2007, 2008. I don't think anybody was really exempt from that. And it was very, very hard. And we lost a lot. And we were very disillusioned because we were following God's plan. We were paying our tithe. And even through this crisis, we paid our tithe. Yeah. But it wasn't until first fruits wow. that it broke the back of the us. enemy wow. and shifted Come on. it. That's a good word there. It really did. It shifted. And she, she confessed what she had done, released that so the enemy had no hold over our money or our stuff or any of our relationships. And 
Our daughter was restored to us. She got 10 checks in the mail. She ended up getting, within a week of that, she got a, a scholarship oh, yeah. to go back to college, fully paid, and $1,000 a month. And, it, and we were praying the prayer all along from Bethel about as we give today, we shall, we are asking God for jobs and better jobs, refunds, checks in the mail, lost money, found money, inheritances. And we did this diligently, not a religious spirit way, but in a joyful way. Yeah. And we actually wrote our checks out on Thursday and stuck it on the counter in the kitchen. And we would go by every single time we saw that check and we would call that in. And we called our dog in and we called in debt free. <laughs> That's awesome. And when we got commissioned and we needed to sell our house, mm -hmm. we put it on the market. It sold in four hours. Wow. For more than we were asking. Come on. I'm telling you that it was a, it was a lifestyle supercharged change. And I can't even put it in biblical words because it just it's overwhelming. It's more than you could ever think or ask. And it, but it started as a trickle and started rolling. So let's fast forward to now. Okay. In October 2017. I woke up in the morning. I paid all the bills the day before, so we still had a little bit of money in our account, and we were, I was feeling pretty satisfied. And I woke up, and the Lord said, I want you to give that to the new associate pastor at church. I went, okay. And I went to my wife, and I said, we have $400 left. That's not an awful lot of money, but all of the bills are paid, and I'm, I always pay way over. There could have been more, but I was paying whatever bills we had, and I was double paying or triple paying. I was being a really good steward. And I said to her, we have $400 left, and I'm supposed to give this to, I'm supposed to give half to our new associate pastor. And she said, okay. She was very cheerful about it. There was no question about it. It wasn't like, well, what are we going to do for the next two weeks when there's only got $200? It was just a, okay. So we went to church. I had written the check, and we walk in the door, and the pastor announces, this is Pastor Appreciation Month. I want everybody to write out an extra check for staff so we can appreciate our staff. This isn't for me. This is for the staff. So I knew that we were right in alignment. That alignment Amen. is so important. Amen. Alignment with you, alignment with Ascend, alignment in our church. We were just really, really in alignment. I think that's so important to be aligned appropriately. And, and I walked right up to the, the associate pastor and I said, I want you to know, because I felt like I was supposed to testify to him, that God has you on his heart. And I know that this transition is hard for you, but he's, he knows you, he sees you, and he asked me before pastor ever said a word to give you a check, here it is. Wow. I want you to know God sees you, God loves you, and God's going to provide for you. And he just started bawling. Praise God. He wow. just started bawling. Wow. The next day, less than 24 hours later, a check in the mail for $2,870. Now, we're not a name it and claim it kind of people. That's not who we are, but we are walking in faith that God will provide abundantly above all we could ever ask or think. Since that day, since that day, one year from the 1st of October to the 1st of October in 2018, we have received so many checks, I can't even tell you how many, and the total amount is $33,500 in checks above and beyond our income. Wow. Because we say yes to God whenever he asks us, we do it with a cheerful heart, and we are in alignment with his purposes for us. Yeah. And in ministry. And we have come to believe this very, very, very deeply. And we try to pass this on to everybody who will listen. If you're doing what you're called to do, when you're called to do it, you can't help but be in the place where your blessing will be. Amen. That's if good. you are doing what you think you need to do, you will, you will have the provision that you earn. But God's provision is so much greater is so much more abundant, is so much more overwhelming, is so much more able, he is so much more able than you to provide for you. That doesn't mean you have an excuse not to work okay. and to do the job you're called to do. That just means be in alignment. Be on time where you're supposed to be, when you're supposed to be. Be ready. Say wow. yes. Amen. That's Amen. good stuff. Let's thank the Lord for those words of encouragement. So how's your mailman? <laughs> blessed. Mailman's blessed. Mailman's blessed. The, you know, this is really an amazing story because, you know, our chapter is on ministry and how do we get involved in ministry. And so many people say, I want to be in ministry, but lots of times what stops us from doing ministry is finances. And so the Lord really worked on some areas 
for you guys to get some things squared away in such a way that it released you into ministry. What has happened in ministry since the finances have gotten aligned? Um, you taught, was it on Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, on the great and effectual door yes. that is open to you. Yeah. And it's like we went up two or three levels in great and effectual doors open to us. Wow. We just got back from uh, Oklahoma City, where uh, John Benefil commissioned us as apostles over Oregon. Praise God. That was never in my wildest dreams. Are yeah. you kidding me? We have had, we have, everywhere we go, we meet people that we would rather just, I mean, we just would be excited to go to their conferences. Yeah. And they, and they fellowship with us, and they call us by name, and they, and they recognize us. It's just, I can't, it's God, it's not us. Please understand, we are just like you guys. Yep. We're, you know, we worked, we serve God, we volunteered at church, we do all the things that, that we want to do because we love God, but there's a new thing in us that's an exciting, invigorating expectation that God's going to do something. Yeah. And so it's just opening doors. Wow. So just the other night, we went to some friend's house, and they had invited a whole bunch of couples because they knew we were coming. That never happened before. Okay. That never happened before. Yeah. Every one of them is a business leader, and we prayed over each one of them, and before we were done, we had a personal word from them. We didn't know that was going to happen, and every one of them was crying and bawling, and they knew that they'd had a touch from God. It's oh, amazing. What's happened in, your, in the anointing in your lives? Talk about the, the presence of God, the anointing of God, because you guys have been doing ministry a long time. What's happened in this window of time? The most remarkable shift is the increase in the authority that we carry when we pray. Okay. Um, and, and then after that, I would say the, the favor of God. But when I pray a thing, it, I, I'm seeing it, like, occur. Or we pray that before um, we go, you know, here or there to meet with people or before somebody comes to our home. And what I pray happens. Like, it's not like way in the future. It's th something really shifted with the authority. So the spiritual authority is greater. Yes. Oh, my goodness. The prophetic insight is more accurate and okay. greater. And the level of support that God brings unexpectedly is exponential. Wow. So much so that we own our home, and we, we have an almost new RV that we use as a ministry center and bring people in from all over the country. And they stay for three days while we do an intense inner healing, working with them to the, so that they can hear from God and know what their destiny and call is. Our whole desire is that people are released into their destiny and call. This is phenomenal. I mean, what do you guys think hearing something like this? This is amazing. <laughs> because, Michelle, would you pray about that disappointment? Just yes. helping people with that. And then you can pray about the forgiveness and bitterness. Let's just receive everybody. Lord, I just pray for everyone here tonight, God. I ask that hope and joy would be restored tonight to this people, Lord. Yes. I pray, God, that every a root of bitterness or that may, they may be harboring uh, because of discouragement and despair and uh, has, has caused them not to see... Th the hope of the future. But Lord, I, I ask God for your fire to come and burn deeply within everybody in this place. In Jesus' name, I come against discouragement and despair and I, I release hope. Mm. And I hope and joy, hope and joy. Hallelujah. And I pray that as people go forward in their lives, Lord, uh, this throughout this week, even tonight on the way home, Lord, uh, that you will shift them into a place of joy and they will begin to rejoice and sing and over uh, that uh, the despair. And I'm just sensing also uh, tiredness, just dragging themselves here to church and dragging themselves. Lord, I just ask uh, for a fire in their steps yes. and let them all uh, come leave tonight encouraged, God. And, and blessed in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, we just all come before you and we expose any bitterness or disappointment or unforgiveness that we have for any issue, for any person. 
We just lay it before your altar, Lord. In fact, we just lift it up right now, and we ask your mighty heavenly host to come and grab those things and throw them and take them to the abyss. Mm. Lord, we ask them to be gone forever from our thoughts, and we ask, Lord God, that we just demark the soil right in front of us, and we step over that never to step backwards. We walk forward into forgiveness, yes. and we leave it behind. We leave it behind so that the steps that we take now keep us towards our destiny and towards fulfilling our call. And we thank you, Lord God, that we are fired up. We are fired up, and we want to be contagious. Yes. We want to be contagious. Yes. We want to be foxes with fire tails. Come on. We want to go through our workplace. We want to go through our families. We want to have an impact wherever you put us, Lord. In the grocery store, we want to be fired up and so excited that people go, I want what he got. I want what she's got. That's what I want. I want to, I want to do that because we got God in us, and they need it. Amen. Jesus. Yes. Wow. Praise God. Thank you so much. I, the Lord is saying to everyone um, to get ready, to make yourself ready for your day with destiny. Amen. Amen. Wow. All right. Yeah. We're looking forward to visiting again next week. Everybody, go ahead and enjoy your times at the table. Do this, do this chapter. Make sure you read all this information. And then we're going to talk about what does it mean to move into convergence and how do you move into convergence. That's going to be next week. So we'll turn it over to you right now. Thanks for joining us tonight. God bless you, everybody.